Hi everyone, this is Dr. Amal Qaisi. Today I will be explaining to you the pulmonary embolism. Stick around because this is an important subject. You will face it in all your exams, maybe PROC exam, USMLA exam, whatever exam, and maybe in the clinical practice you will face it. Or maybe in your dreams, I don't know, but you will face it. Why I'm holding a light bulb so I will keep you interested. Keep watching. You will get informations you need. Well, I will try to make it enjoyable as possible because it's medicine, it's tough. So we need some kind of something to be enjoyable. Well, at least I have to decide to make it enjoyable as much as I could. Well, embolism means something blocks an artery. Pulmonary, well, it's pulmonary artery. That's the pulmonary artery that goes to the lung. Basically originate from the right ventricle, goes to the lung, branches to left and right, and then branches inside the lungs. That's the artery that brings the blood to the lungs, the lung will oxygenate it, and then it will go back to the uh, left atrium by the pulmonary vein. Well, we know this information. Pulmonary embolism, it's one of the most important embolism in the body. Embolism means blockage in artery, any kind of artery anywhere. But when I say pulmonary embolism, that I mean the lung, the, 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 the artery that goes to the lung. Because there's many things kind of block an artery, we have different kind of embolisms. But we have to know each one of them when it will happen. Well, first of all, when we have something blocking a pulmonary artery, that we call it a pulmonary embolism, then they, we will have what we call it sign and symptoms. What we will see on this patient, we will see increase in heart rate. Why is the heart rate is increasing? Because the heart tried to compensate because the lung isn't working probably, oxygen saturation is dropping sometimes. Well, it's not always because it depends about the amount of embolism that well it, if it's here it's not like it's here so that's different but first of all we have to understand the heart is trying to compensate and the part of the lung well there is no blood is coming telling the brain there is a problem with the blood the blood is not coming and there is no oxygenation here so that's part telling the body to increase the heart rate increase the respiratory rate so basically that's the most important thing to understand with pulmonary embolism and when it happens it's mostly sudden so it's happened without telling anybody so you see sudden shortness of breath or dyspnea well that's easy to understand and all the symptoms are easy to understand. Those are the most important symptoms. Also, you may find a fever. Why it's fever? Because this part, it's leaking blood and that will lead to some kind of inflammation. So there will be a fever, but it will be a low grade. Because this is not an infection. So we can see sometimes a fever. So if you have the question, there is a fever, a low grade fever, a sudden, shortness of a breath and increasing in heart rate and increasing in respiratory rate, you have to think about pulmonary embolism. Also, you will find something called hematoptasis, which is, which is basically throwing off or coughing blood. Because of what? Because that part of lung may die and throw blood into the uh, bronchus and then you cough blood. So may, you might find hematoptasis and you may have some kind of foamy uh, sputum or foamy mucus with it. So that's also something you have to understand. Sometimes the cough will be productive cough. It will be productive. So there is a mucus also with it. Also, what you have to see or what can you see? Well, using ECG, we can see something. Well, ECG is not very helpful, but they will use it in the questions a lot of time. ECG can show you what we call it the S1 Q3 T3 sign, which is basically a deformity happens to be with pulmonary embolism in the ECG. But that's not always the case. I mean, 99% you won't see. You may see what we call it the right bundle branch block. That's what you will see. Well, let's say not most of the time, but usually that's what you see. Also, you may see increase in the heart rate in ECG. That's it. Tachycardia. That's what you will see. Well, a sinus tachycardia. 
but also you can see on chest x-ray nothing but sometimes you will find they will ask you if you see something called a western mark mark or a hump tone hump well I, supposedly I'm writing it correctly hump tone humps that's a deformity happens to be an x-ray sometimes in pulmonary embolism which is basically it is when the arteries stop supplying blood there will be an infract at the shape of the artery which is uh, like a triangle or what's called uh, which shape which shape so that's what you see but not always this is very important you have to understand that clinically not very important because not always you will see it but I wrote it because sometimes you will find it in exams the best way to diagnose is we use what he called the VQ scan which basically we give a radioactive material both in the artery and inhaled in the lung that will give us an image and if there is a blocked in the artery that we can see it very much clearly on the VQ scan we can use also the CT scan with contrast of course with some dye so it will show us or we can use an angiography both for seeing the results and both for treatment we can use it for treatment we use heparin and war Frain, which is basically a drug that thinning your blood and we can use a thrombolytic drugs like streptokinase and alteplase but that's not usually done basically we can use a catheter and we can do a thromboectomy we basically we use the catheter and we drag it through the veins and we take the emboli but if it's small emboli sometimes we miss that's what happened so basically that's what you see on the patient well going back to the different kinds of embolism I first wrote the thromboembolism which is basically what I mean by it there is a thrombus formation inside of an artery or a vein I mean so that thrombus will grow bigger bigger and bigger and sometimes a part of it will be broken and then that part will travel to block another artery that's traveling part we name it embolism which is made of thrombus so it's thromboembolism thrombosis it's the formation of thrombus locally that part is going around and blocking an artery so this is the thromboembolism basically happens with patient with deep vein thrombosis DVT which is the veins in their legs they have thrombus and then that thrombus will travel and goes to the right ventricle pump it to the one of the arteries and one of the branches and then we'll make a pulmonary embolism noticing that when there is a pulmonary embolism a back pressure will happen we we'll call it pulmonary hypertension and that will lead to I mean chronically to lead to increase the pressure on the right ventricle leading to what you call a copulmonal or right ventricle be defected because of that back pressure and finally will lead to right ventricle heart failure so that's we have to notice that's the difficulty of pulmonary embolism it's not always because the patient will die from shortness of breath or decreasing in oxygen saturation but basically may die from heart failure in the later in his life fat embolism basically it's happened when a broken bone fractures because the bones contain fat what we call it the yellow marrow so when a broken bone sometimes it leaks fat into the blood and the blood can cause embolism so basically fat embolism happens with the fractures of the bones septic embolism it has because of infection basically when you have endocarditis because in endocarditis the valves are be defected and then they can throw some thrombus so they can cause and septic emboli this is because of infection well gas emboli this is because of an IV line well sometimes we do this because when we puncture the IV sometimes we let air leakage into the IV onto the veins and then that air will, co will collect and make a embolism so basically this is patient comes from the surgery or something like that tumor embolism well it's the name suggests it's somebody with a cancer or something tumor that goes through the blood vessel sometimes it will emboli and goes that tumor the tissue will co well they will collect and make the artery just block amniotic embolism that happens with somebody 
is having amniotic fluid, which is a pregnant woman. Sometimes during delivery, some of this amniotic fluid leak through the placenta and goes through the blood and make a devastating problem and cause sometimes a pulmonary embolism or any kind of embolism. There is. So that's basically a pulmonary embolism. I have tried to make it enjoyable as possible. Thanks for watching, share it, tag from your friends and tell your friends about it so they will understand it. Thank you for watching and have a nice day. Goodbye.